What if Pokemon could armor evolve like Digimon? Let's find out. Hey everyone, Brandon here. You guys really enjoyed the last video where we gave Kanto Pokemon their own Digimon armor evolutions. So in this video, we're giving Johto Pokemon some love. And I would be remiss if I didn't include the lover of Pokemon Gen 2 and Digimon Adventure Zero 2, Carney X. Uh, hello? Karn? Whoops, sorry. Where were you? I was worried. Yeah, sorry, I was, uh... I was just in the endless void that I go to when I'm not recording videos. Oh, you mean the one all YouTubers go to? Okay, that's it's all good then. That's the one. We live to serve our YouTube audience. Anyway, let's get into some armor evolutions. We actually wanted to start this video by saying we heard you. You wanted Pikachu to have a friendship armor evolution, and you wanted Pikachu and Eevee to get armor evolutions for the Digi-Egg of Miracles and Destiny. So we're going to do just that. So starting us off is Pikachu with the Digi-Egg of Friendship, which gives us... Kamichu, an electric fighting type. You may notice some striking similarities between this and a certain scrapped Raichu evolution. Yes, we of course took elements from Gorochu for this design, but also tried to pump in some Japanese influence, specifically Raijin, which is part of where Kamichu gets its name. Another name for Raijin is Kaminari-san, and Kaminari means thunder. My hero fans rejoice. Kami also means god, so its name literally translates to God Squeak. You can see Kamichu's tail comes across its back and around its head just like the taiko drums of Raijin, and has a fierce expression that also matches. Kamichu are revered by the entire Pikachu line. They will feed Kamichu excess electricity stored in their cheeks to help fuel its earth-shattering thunder. Kamichu will use its tail to beat the ground like a drum, sending electricity through it, enough to power whole cities. Before we continue, there isn't a sponsor on today's video, but I would greatly appreciate it if you became a member. You get early access to videos, our members' exclusive Discord channels, sneak peeks at upcoming content, and more. Custom art videos can be expensive, so becoming a member greatly helps more videos like this happen. Thank you all so much for your support, and let's get back to Karn. Next up is Pikachu again. This time with the Digi Egg of Miracles, which when combined creates Pikakira, an electric steel type. Digi Egg of Miracles evolutions don't really have much of a prevailing theme, except for blocky gold armor. So we added that to Pikachu, but we also continued the godly theme from Kamichu and brought in a little bit of a Thor influence, which you can see with Pikakira's tail being shaped like a hammer and the shape of its helmet. Magnemon, which is Vimon's Digi Egg of Miracles evolution, is a little bit more humanoid than its other Digi Egg evolutions. So we chose to make Pikakira a bit more humanoid as well. Pikakira's name comes from the Japanese onomatopoeia Kirakira, which means sparkling, but more so the sparkling of jewelry and Pikakira is covered in gold, so it fits perfectly. Its golden appearance is also why we gave it the steel typing, given gold is a precious metal. And the blocky armor also helps. Pikakira tend to do better in battles when the odds are stacked against them. They will win despite insurmountable odds. Their tail is surprisingly heavy and can deliver some thunderous blows. Next up is Pikachu again. I'm just kidding, it's Eevee. When paired with the Digi Egg of Destiny, Eevee becomes Cronion, a pure steel type. Just like the Digi Egg of Miracles, Destiny didn't have much of a theme to go on. So we just incorporated the egg's design into Eevee's and tried to play up the Destiny or Fate motif. Its name comes from Kronos, the Greek god of time, known to many as Father Time nowadays. Not to be confused with Cronus, the Titan. That guy was a jerk and uh, ate his kids. Kronos has these angelic wings, which plays perfectly into the Digi Egg of Destiny's already existing design. Also, the Crest of Destiny on its chest almost looks like a little clock. Time and Destiny are pretty interlocked thematically, and in some tales, Kronos is the father to the Morai, also known as the Fates. We gave Kronion the same steel typing as Pikakira for the same reasons, but also because the Digi Egg of Miracles and Destiny are connected thematically and in the story of Digimon the movie. Kronion are extremely fast despite their armored appearance. Some believe it has the power to slow down time to achieve this speed. And that finally brings us to the Johto Pokemon we promised in this video. Remember them? We sincerely appreciate you sticking with us. Oh, and speaking of, let's start with the Digi Egg of Sincerity. Unlike last video, we decided to switch things up a bit with these armor evolutions. Rather than giving them a Pokemon that is already representative of the type or element that they already align with, we mix things up to make for what we feel are more interesting concepts. So we decided to give Sentret the Digi Egg of Sincerity to become Sentanuki. 
a normal grass type. As the name suggests, Senta Nuki fully leans into Sentret's partial Tanuki inspiration. Sincerity armor evolutions typically add some kind of Japanese influence into the design, with Shurimon being a ninja and Yaksamon having training swords. So we fed into the more mythical Bakke Danuki, which is a Tanuki yokai. Bakke Danuki are tricksters and can change shape to fool humans, in an attempt to make them look stupid. Sentanuki also takes inspiration from a particular Bakke Danuki named Danza Burrow, who would sell leaves to humans by using magic to make them look gold. Danzaburo could also pull off some ninja-like feats, so it has a little ninja headband with a symbol on it that sort of looks like kanji, but is actually Sentret's face. Though Sentanuki is a normal and grass type, we imagine it could learn a few dark type moves, and moves centered around magic or deceit, like magical leaf and trick. Sentanuki is known for its mastery of deception. There is a legend that a Sentanuki once drove off a bunch of Zoroa and Zoroark through its powers of trickery. Next up, we have the Digi Egg of Love. I know Karn just said we're switching things up a bit, and we are, but this choice was just a little too good to pass up. We decided to give the Digi Egg of Love to Togepi. So when combined, they make Togepid, a pure fairy type. Would you just look how cute it is? I had this idea in my brain and I really wanted to see it executed, okay? The Digi Egg has been flipped upside down to form the shell and wings of this design, while armoring up the legs. If it wasn't obvious, it gets its name from Cupid, the Roman god of love, while still keeping with the eye sound of Toga Tick and Toga Kiss. Also, it's kind of like we just slapped a D on the end of its name. We tried to make this feel different from Togetic in the proportions, with a shorter neck, longer arms and legs, and more cherubic wings. Plus, you know, the whole armor and crest of love on its head thing. Togepid are usually seen around weddings, anniversaries, or even just dates. They say if you see one during one of these events, your relationship will be happy and long. After that, we have the Digi Egg of Knowledge. This pick is also less of a switch up, but still fits really well. We ultimately picked Lediba, so when given the Digi Egg of Knowledge, it becomes Ledanger, a bug fighting type. As Karn and I are both Power Rangers and Tokusatsu fans, we just had to play into Ledian's Kamen Rider vibe. But switch it up, so Ledanger is a Super Sentai reference. Bungu Sentai Ledanger! I mean, who knows? Apparently, the next Sentai series is supposed to be bug themed, so. Anyway, nerding out aside, Ledanger's name obviously comes from Lediba and Ranger, but also mixes in Danger. As most Power Rangers are usually in Danger a lot, we wanted to hold on to the Digi Egg of Knowledge's drill theme as well, so its boots are little drills, which actually brings in a little Gurren Logon inspiration as well, which is like my favorite anime. The danger usually fight in teams of five or six, though they will occasionally break off into teams of three and battle amongst themselves to train, or just to argue, but then return to normal after a few hours. On to the Digi Egg of Light. This one was a fun pick, with Christmas right around the corner, of course we had to show some love to Delibird. I know there is some recent discourse that it's supposed to be delivered, like delivered, I can't do it. I'm sorry, Pokemon fans. <laughs> so with the Digi Egg of Light, Deli Bird becomes Deli Barsa, an ice ghost type. We shifted its Santa inspiration over to another classic Christmas tale, A Christmas Carol. In said tale, on Christmas Eve, three ghosts visit Ebenezer Scrooge to offer him a chance at redemption. A chance to see the light and joy of Christmas. So we base Deli Barsa's design on all three ghosts. The ghost of Christmas past, who has a light coming from their head, sometimes a candle. The ghost of Christmas present, who holds a torch and has a cheery demeanor, which is where Deli Barsa receives its beard and expression from. And the ghost of Christmas yet to come, which shows Scrooge his death and has a more traditionally ghostly appearance, which plays more into Deli Barsa's ghost typing and is where its more cloaked bottom half comes from. Deli Barsa gets its name from the Barsan or Barsa Barsa, a rooster yokai that breathes ghostly fire akin to a will-o'-the-wisp. Delibasa will give out ghostly presents to those it feels are in need of help. The presents contain nothing but leave the opener with a feeling of hope and goodwill towards others. Speaking of hope, we have the Digi Egg of Hope. I know many out there were probably just as disappointed as I was at first to see the Dunsparce, so we are out here for redemption, showing what we had hoped Dunsparce could have turned into. So with the Digi Egg of Hope, Dunsparce becomes Dunspius, a normal flying type. Hope Armor evolutions usually have some kind of mythological or astrological zodiac theme to them. With Dunsparce being based on a kind of mythical serpent, I thought, why don't we go for the forgotten zodiac, Ophiuchus, the serpent holder. The man holding the serpent is actually the Greek god Asclepius, a god of medicine and healing, which is where Dunspius gets its name. Asclepius is usually depicted holding a rod with a serpent coiled around it, so we tried to incorporate both the serpent and rod into one with Dunspius's design, which you can see with its long handle-like tail. The rod of Asclepius is actually a symbol still used today in medicine. It is also mixed up with the Caduceus, another rod with serpents on it given to Hermes which we also incorporated into Dunspius's design with the large wings on its head, and its entire head is modeled after the Digi Egg of Hope. 
Dunspeus has a special antitoxin within its stinger that is used by medical practitioners of the Pokemon world. It can treat severe poisoning and even simple illnesses like a cold. Finally, we're on to the Johto starters. For Chikorita, we decided to give it the Digi-Egg of Courage, so it becomes Flareosa, a grass fire type. We based its design around the Flame Lily, also known as the Gloriosa Superba, from which Flareosa gets its name. The Digi-Egg manifests as a mask for this Pokemon, and the fire atop its head reflects a fiery version of the leaf on Bayleaf's head. We wanted this to feel a bit more draconic, as well as to tie into Agumon and Flame Dramon's association with the Crest of Courage. So the Lily neck piece is meant to reflect a dragon's wings, and its flames reflect a dragon's fiery breath. Flareosa whip their necks around to attack, which can also burn their opponent in the process. The fiery flower around their neck keeps them safe from potential attacks, as the petals leave a burning itch on whatever it touches. Next up, we have the Digi-Egg of Reliability, which we decided to give to Cyndaquil, so when combined, it becomes Volquil, a fire water type. Volquil retains the Digi-Egg of Reliability's aquatic theme by shifting Cyndaquil's Rodan inspiration to the Pyranean Desmond, a semi-aquatic mole that can use its nose like a little snorkel, which also ties into its aquatic transportation theme. Though, snorkeling is probably one of the more primitive kinds of underwater travel, the shape of Volquil's back refers to underwater volcanoes and hydrothermal vents, while also looking like a cooling tower at a nuclear plant. Volquil's name comes from Volcano, Mole, and Cyndaquil. Volquil walk along the ocean floor, heating the water around it to the point where most water types cannot stand to be around it. If it needs a quick escape, it can use its fiery back like a jet engine. On on to Totodile, my personal favorite Johto starter, which we also gave the Digi-Egg of Friendship. So when combined, it becomes Sergio Sucus, a water electric type. We decided to play into Croconaw's caveman pattern and bring in a prehistoric crocodilian for this armor, the Sarcosuchus, from which it gets its name. Surge is also both an aquatic term and an electrical one. Its jaw is supposed to resemble jumper cables, or crocodile clips, with two big front teeth to reflect the horn of the Digi-Egg of Friendship in a more unconventional way. A Sergosuchus's bite contains enough voltage to incapacitate a Steelix. It can move just as quickly on land as it can in the water though it isn't very fast. And those are Pokemon Armor Evolutions. And if you want to see a kind of inverse gimmick swap, head on over to my channel, where we're going to be giving Elemental Stone Evolutions to Digimon. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we, we will see, see you guys, guys next time. time.